Hello everyone! Welcome to our YouTube channel, Scientista. Please like, subscribe, and share. Our topic for today is about the nervous system. We are now on our week 3 for quarter 3 in grade 10 science. In our previous lesson, we have learned that a feedback mechanism is the process through which the level of one substance influences the level of another substance. We have also discussed that the menstrual cycle includes a menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulation, and a luteal phase. There are changes in the levels of four hormones which is known as estrogen, LH, FSH, and progesterone during the menstrual cycle. For today's lesson, we are going to focus on the homeostasis and the feedback mechanisms. The following are our objectives for today. Let us first define what is homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a relatively stable internal environment within an organism. It is the body's attempt to maintain a constant and balanced internal environment, which requires persistent monitoring and adjustment as conditions change. There are three main components of homeostasis. We have the receptor, the control center, and last we have the effector. We are going to give examples on how the negative feedback and the positive feedback maintains the balance or the homeostasis in our system. When the stimulus of a drop in temperature is detected by your receptors, it sends a message to the hypothalamus, which is the control center for thermoregulation. A message from the receptors is interpreted by the hypothalamus, then sent to the appropriate effectors. Effectors include erector muscles in your skin and muscle tissue in arterioles. The posterior hypothalamus tells the erector muscles to contract giving you goosebumps and raises hair. It reduces heat loss and basically traps a layer of warm heat above your skin. Furthermore, arterioles are told to constrict, decreasing blood flow to the skin, resulting in a retention of heat. It's also known as vasoconstriction. On the other hand, when the temperature gets too high, effectors include sweat glands and muscle tissue in arterioles or blood vessels. The anterior hypothalamus tells the sweat glands to secrete sweat, which cools the body down by evaporative cooling. Furthermore, arterioles are dilated in order to increase blood flow to the skin, resulting in the loss of heat, which is also known as vasodilation. Another example of a negative feedback mechanism is the blood glucose regulation. Our blood glucose level is from 70 to 100 mg per dl. When the blood sugar rises, it will be detected by the receptors in your pancreas. Pancreas secretes insulin which instructs the body cells such as the muscle cells, fat cells, and liver cells to take the excess glucose until the sugar level decreases the normal range. When the blood sugar reaches the homeostasis, the pancreas stops releasing insulin. Now let us go to the examples for the positive feedback mechanism. In childbirth, the head of the baby pushes against the cervix and stimulates nerve impulses. This information is sent to the brain and in response, the hypothalamus sends the hormone oxytocin to the pituitary gland. Oxytocin is carried into the bloodstream to the uterus where it induces the uterine contractions. The contractions which push the baby against the cervix stimulates the release of the more oxytocin which results in stronger construction. This process stops when the baby is born.
Another example of positive feedback is blood clotting. A blood clot is a mass of blood that forms when platelets, proteins, and cells in the blood stick together. The injured blood vessels in a bleeding wound release a substance to start blood clotting. Platelets attach to the injured side and release chemicals that attract more platelets. The accumulation of platelets results to more chemical release and more platelets are attracted to the location of the clot. The process of clotting continues until the clot is large enough to stop the bleeding. Now let us identify the feedback mechanisms involved in the following situations. If the blood sugar level drops, the brain sends signals to the pancreas to release glucagon that instructs the liver to convert glycogen into glucose to return blood sugar into normal level. The answer is negative feedback. Next question. When you are cold, the blood vessels constrict and the body shivers to increase the body temperature. The answer is negative feedback. The injured blood vessels in a bleeding wound release a substance to start the blood clotting. The answer is positive feedback. The oxytocin release in the uterus during labor results to contraction of uterus. The contraction stimulator release up more oxytocin which results to stronger contractions. The answer is positive feedback. The hypothalamus produces gonadotropin-releasing hormone. The GnRH signals the pituitary to produce follicle-stimulating hormone, which stimulates the ovaries to produce estrogen. High levels of estrogen prevent the production of GnRH and causes the pituitary to make less of a siege. Answer is negative feedback. Thank you for listening. God bless everyone and have a nice day. These are the following references. We are now done with our week 3 for third quarter. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.